I think I think it maybe went a bit long, but but that hopefully gives you guys a sense of what we're doing. Um, let me uh, make sure that I'm seeing everybody and hearing if you guys have any questions so far. Hey, good morning. This is Tyler Kautzrick. Hey, Tyler. Uh, I was wondering uh, about the uh, display of the species that you showed in uh, Excel. Mm -hmm. um, about or between the order class, uh, that slide. Oh, yeah. Uh, how you would organize that to... Um, to display it for normal uh, people who aren't really familiar with order family. Uh, as far as alphabet alphabetization, um, would you alphabetize order and then family? Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, sorry, yeah. So if I was sorting things, yeah. Yes. So so generally, I would. Well, I would. You, however you want to do it, however it works for you guys is cool. Generally speaking. Since this is more of a of a um, using more traditional taxonomic organization, um, so these guys are spiders, and and I know you guys don't know that, or maybe don't know that yet. But if you if you flip through that that guide, you'll see this, and it'll become you know apparent. So um, spiders are not insects. So I would I would sort of first organize it by um, you know by taxonomy, but then for the insects. I would do it alphabetically, right? So then for the insects, I would do it alphabetically. And, and, and if you guys, not that you have to know how to do this, but if you wanted, I think you guys all know this, but if I wanted to um, sort multiple um, rows in either Google Sheets or Excel or whatever, you can just come up and do sort. And I can say the first one is my column A, next would be my column B, next would be my column C, C. And if you went through that, it would it would it would organize stuff so that it would be like um, Tyler's talking about. So if that helps you, great. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll just say that. So so there's no there's no magic to how you want to do that. Although typically I would do it I would do it um, based on higher level taxonomy. Did I answer your question? Maybe I didn't answer your question. Yeah, well, I was uh, more concerned about uh, alphabet. Uh, or about alphabetizing for uh, actually um, communicating information. So, like, none of those names really mean anything to me. So I was wondering how important the common name would be. And oh, alphabetizing that. But instead. by all means. So if you're if we were writing this to an academic journal, I would not worry about that at all. But since you guys are generating a report for your client, your client might not know what coleoptera are. So by all means. I would, I would, I would, I would add maybe order, and have the scientific name, and then have the the common name, you know, beetles or weevils or ants or something of that nature. And um, and one thing that, as as Brent was saying, one thing that I would do, definitely, if if you know if you just saw you know fifty random things and it wasn't that important, and that's one thing. You can have a table like this, but if um, if we, we are we're concerned about food for birds or our most common um, critters, and you guys probably aren't going to get hundreds and hundreds of things, I would take a picture of these guys, the represent, a representative picture of, of the moth or a representative picture of the ant or whatever. And before I got into anything, I would, I would say in the initial results, I'd say these are the critters that we saw, right? And I would have just a a common name, you know, maybe a scientific name and a common name in their picture and have a table of that or have it in the appendix or something, right? And so, and that's the first thing I would say that I saw. I saw all these guys. Um, and then, same with your plants, right? Here, here are the, here, and maybe you don't want, if you have hundreds of plants, maybe you're not going to put hundreds of pictures in, but at least your most common or the most um, uh, relevant uh, individuals for the story you're trying to tell, I would have their pictures in there too. Absolutely. Right now, when we do a, a academic paper, we usually can't do that because we're usually limited on space. But when you're doing these open-ended reports for clients, by all means, common names, images, um, pictures of you guys collecting the samples, all of that is really important because these folks don't have an understanding of how you did this. And so, so I would have that first thing of here are the critters we saw, right? And then later on in the results, then I would maybe put the numbers to it and the, and the averages and the productivity and stuff of that nature. That way everybody has something to refer back to and we're all on the same page. So we're not treating somebody like they're stupid because they don't know what, 
what, uh, uh, I don't know what, what a f- formicidae is, you know, they don't know what an ant is. Right. And so that's not the point. The point is to, to educate people and make it as easy as possible. So one thing I think we're all seeing right now, um, in our current time of insanity is there are, we have elected leaders that are really good at communicating complex ideas and numbers, right? It's tough right now. And we have other people that are fat and stupid and that introduce graphs in a national briefing and stand in front of the graphs, right? So that, that is a big middle finger to the audience saying, I don't care what you think about. I don't, I don't care that you understand this. Your goal with, with this project and all your projects in ESRM is to be rigorous, be, be robust, but if you think in any way, shape, or form, someone might not understand the taxonomy, might not understand the, 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 the theoretical underpinnings or whatever, take a paragraph, take an image, and, 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 and show them. And that, that's not weakness, that's strength. What is weakness is standing in front of your graphs, hiding your data, trying to say it very quickly and get off stage. That suggests that someone doesn't want you to understand. And your goal should be, how can I communicate to this person all the important aspects of my backyard, however I can do that. Dr. I had a quick question. Yeah. Um, Do you have any tips on like how to collect the samples from the pitfall traps without like getting antifreeze everywhere? Yeah. And like being clean? Yeah. So great question. So I would probably wear gloves. I mean, I definitely wear gloves if I was using some antifreeze. And again, can you guys see my camera? Yeah. Uh, Okay. So, uh, so here's my, um, Here's my trap from yesterday, uh, and I, you know, if if I had more time and was more competent, I would probably have that microscope set up so I could go through this with you. But I think that's a bit overkill at this point. Um, so as long as you're really careful about when you're pull, picking it up like this and, and you're pulling it out of the the ground, it generally speaking doesn't get on you. Where it tends to get on you is when um, you maybe. And I, I don't think this is the case with most of your guys' uh, places, but we have tend to have swell and shrink soils or soils that are really clay rich that almost sometimes they create like a, you know, like a, like a vacuum. You know, like if, 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 this, if this lip was really tightly around the, and, this, and the soil is a little bit wet, sometimes you go to pick it up and it sticks. And you're like, ah, and that's, and it usually sticks for a second and you pull and then it pops. And that's usually where you get the stuff all over the place. And so what I would do is I would, I would pull it up. And again, for most of you guys, since we're not in the field, we're not, we don't have to get in our cars and drive back to school or what have you. There's absolutely no problem with leaving it in the trap itself, right? Of, of, of pulling the cup out of the ground and just taking that ground into the house, right? So, um, so I would, I would knock the dirt off of the side and stuff so I could see it. But, but, um, we pour, we, our, my default is to put it in a collection jar like this or some other collection jar just because we're usually going and collecting a bunch of them and moving through the, through the site. Um, as long as I have a label on here, either a label on the outside or a, a piece of paper for that matter, that I, a, a, a printer paper, you know, white paper that I've written with a pencil on it, I could drop that inside. As long as I have a way to know this was my site one, my site two, my site three, it's all good. And, um, and so once you get it inside, the next thing is going to be, how do I get the stuff out of, out of the antifreeze? So typically what I would do inside is take a, um, now if you have your mom's, your mom's sieve, I don't know if you should do this with antifreeze. She might not, might not totally like that. Uh, you could wash it and it would probably be fine. But, but uh, what we would typically do is have a little, a filter, a, you know, a, a, and if you don't have one, uh, a, a piece of window screen would work just as well. Um, so if you could take your window screen off your window and, and just use that and rewash it, it'd probably be fine. But what I would do is I would take this, if you guys can see me, I, I, I'm not really well prepared, but, but I'd take this and I would, I would initially pour, let it settle for a while. Okay. So let it sit on my desk for, uh, man, this looks like it's black. It's actually red. Oh, look, my, my better half has, has <laughs> obtained for me a, a sieve. So this would be what we do. If you guys were in the lab, we could take this, but what I would do is I'd leave this you know, go, go have a libation or a hot dog or whatever it is. You guys, a vegan dog, as you guys are so appropriate. Um, but so I'd have that and I'd leave this sit on my desk for an hour or two, right? We're going to let the, whatever stuff settle, settle. And I wish you guys could see this, man. I wish I had better light. Oh, maybe. Ooh, look at this. What if I use technology? That would be super crazy. Can you, how about this? Ooh, snap. 
It's like a dance party. Okay, so if we see this, there's gunk at the bottom, there's a few things floating, and then there's a liquid, right? So what I would do, the, the first approach I would take is those things that are floating, I would go and I'd, I would physically pull those guys out with tweezers or a knife or a stick, you know, somehow just, just even toothpicks, you know, get those guys out. Okay, so then I would have it, so I just had my clear liquid. I would take that and I would, I would take, a, a, again, we talked about this. If, if we were gonna reuse this, if it was clean, which usually it is, um, I would pour that into my reusable container to reuse my antifreeze or whatever the substance is for the next trap. Um, if you guys are using your vodka or whatever, you know, we don't need to reuse it. That can just go out. But I would first take that and I would pour off as much of that clear liquid as I could. Okay. So, so now I've taken the floaters out. I've taken the bulk of the liquid out. And now I'm left with this, with this stuff at the bottom, which is the majority of stuff. I would take my window screen or my, my mesh or whatever, and I would do that over, um, if it was antifreeze, I would have to do it over like a five gallon bucket is what we typically use in class. Um, but if it, again, if it's your, if it's your vodka, you could do it over the sink cause it's fine to just flush it down the sink. And I would, and I would just, you know, pour it out. I pour it out. The stuff would be all over this screen, right? And then very, and the big things, again, I would pick out boom, 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 boom. Um, but if I did have a lot of relatively small things, they're going to be harder to pick out. I would take the screen and I would turn it like this, angle it or my, my windows, my window screen or whatever. And I would turn on my faucet and I would rinse this, right? Gently rinse it so that I would in effect take the stuff that was all over my, my filter and it would go down to just this one little corner, right? This one little chunk. And then that's what I would take up end, whack it and have that chunk come out. And that's the stuff I would start picking through to look for, to look for who's who. Now, if we were gonna preserve this and we're done with that, we would, we would make sure that stuff would then go into alcohol, typically is the preservative we would use. But um, the key thing is once we remove, now if you guys are using the vegetable oil or whatever, you're probably fine. If you're using the, the coolant or the glycerol, you're fine. You can, you can take, take an hour or two to go through your stuff. If you're using more of the vodka type of, type of um, materials that are just alcohol-based, and I remove all my critters from that alcohol, they've been soaking in that alcohol, they're going to start to dry out. And so, you know, the big beetle isn't going to change that much. But the smaller critters, the worms and things of that nature, will potentially start to change a lot. So if I, if I knew that if I had 100 individuals that I knew it was going to take me a while to look through, um, I would, I would probably put a little bit of water or that, you know, some of that clean alcohol or whatever, not the stuff I had just taken out of my trap, which might be a little dirty, but, but some cleaner stuff and make sure that those individual, those organisms stay hydrated and don't dry out too much. Um, when they're, when they're fresh, you can move them around and you can say, does this guy have an antenna? The picture has an antenna. I don't think this dude has an antenna, but he might, it just might be stuck to his head. So maybe if you were to poke around with it, it would, oh, okay, guys, guys got an antenna. Whereas if he dried out and he's crispy, that's a lot harder to do. Does that help? Yeah, thank you okay, so cool. much. Cool. And and yeah, I want to say to you guys that Dr. Abe put together a the um, pitfall and sticky trap recovery videos on YouTube that I posted on Canvas uh, yesterday. Oh, well. yeah, watch those. You guys should definitely watch those before you pull them in. Totally, totally. Yeah. I thought, sorry, I thought you already watched them. If not, you guys should watch those. It's so interesting. Everybody's so excited about this project. So I have a, uh, I have a slight question. Yeah. Uh, so I, it might just be that Zoom cut you off at an inopportune time, but I Ooh. thought you said something about actually having bees in our, uh, in our pit traps. I was wondering how that works. Oh, uh, so we've, we've gotten them in the past. Uh, I, I guess I, I was talking off the top of my head. More, we're more typically likely to get bees in the sticky traps. I thought so. That's why I was asking because it was like, hold on. Yeah, no, no, no. So, so I, I was if I if I said that I misspoke. Um, pretty commonly, we get ants in the pitfall traps. We pretty commonly get mosquitoes, flies, and bees on the sticky trap. Um, I'd say interesting though. It will it'll be interesting to see what you guys get after the fires. After the fires of in Cam Park. For the first time, we had some sticky traps covered with ants, completely, completely covered. Never before had we ever seen that. 
And so what seems to have happened is the ants, these are Argentine ants, they, they survived the fire and, uh, and came up and were like, well, what the hell? And there was no food because everything was dead. And so they were, they were essentially food hunting. Um, and so sometimes you do get things that fly in the pitfall traps and things that crawl occasionally on the sticky traps, but those are usually aberrant events. Thank you. Yeah. Cool beans. Any other questions for Dr. A on this or anything related to the sticky traps and the, the pitfall traps? So just out of curiosity, people are mostly going to pull their traps in today or in a couple days? So since I set, I set my traps last uh, su last Sunday, or I think, yeah, it was either last Saturday or Sunday. So I pulled them in. Um, I pulled them in. Yeah. Cool. Pulled them in. Yeah. Yesterday. I'm just, and so today I could, uh, so today what I was going to do is, uh, do the actual counts to see what's actually on them and then start the process on, on, uh, identifying what species is what. And then after, and after counting all that, then you add it into the into these spreadsheets, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so great. So, so there's, there's nothing magic about, about having to do the counting today. That's fine. The ideal thing would be if you guys could have the traps deployed for five days. But if something comes up, if it's six days now, it, 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 we can adjust that. We just need to make sure that the, the days are adjusted. That's just nice to have a standardized, since we have a standardized area, it's nice to also have a standardized time, um, even though we do adjust for time. Um, but, uh, the nice thing about, uh, both the, the pitfalls with the liquids that you have in there and the sticky traps is they do, they do persist for, for, you know, a long time. So, so if we left this sticky trap in the hot sun for a couple weeks, some of the critters would start to get a little smushy and everything. But even then, I mean, we have, we've had traps that are, you know, 15 years old that are, you know, they're obviously in the lab, so they're not, not uncontrolled environments, but, but, um, most of these critters you'll get on here are mostly exoskeleton. And so they, they do preserve fairly well. And, and I, I don't know if I showed you guys this, but, but if you care, just to look at, look at my, one, one other thing I'll note, what tends to happen if we have the trap on the, um, on the, uh, uh, types of, uh, hoop, hoop, uh, ring supports that we put that can move with the wind what we tend to get is we tend to get a side that is more diverse and more um, abundant critters. And that would be this side. There's a mosquito hawk and stuff on here. You guys can see that. And then a trap that is less, or a side that is less, um, you know, fewer dudes. And that's primarily because this is generally the, the side that would be most oriented into the wind. And that's where most guys are encountering it. Um, so, so yeah, so these guys, these guys are preserved for, you know, for some time. Um, so, so there's nothing magical about the day you process them. I just was curious if people, um, did anybody, did anybody not, has anybody not received their traps? Okay, cool. Yep. I think everybody, maybe one person, it might've been sent to their neighbor's house, but we figured, I think we figured that out yesterday. Excellent. Um, what, how do you, so I think it, I, I know a lot of students are kind of distributed throughout the, the state now, but is it worth saving these once campus opens up and, and keeping these? I, I'm kind of a, a, I'm not a hoarder for yeah. anything else besides data. And I think it's always useful to keep, especially things like this, like sticky traps where it's, it's easy to store a shit ton of them in a small space. Yeah. So. No, I think uh, so. I think so. I, I think it would also be cool to maybe next week if, and, uh, and I haven't talked to Brent about this, but. But if, if it's if it's cool, maybe we could do a quick just ten minute chat. I'd just be curious what people are seeing, right? I mean, so 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 part of that is also are are we seeing similar things all over the place? Are we seeing really different? We've never done this backyard investigation, so so I think it would be great if you guys can save them. I would. I, I, I mean, I mean the sticky traps are easy to save. I mean they're just yep. they just put them together. Um, the uh, uh, I would say the one thing that we do do with our sticky traps that I didn't tell you guys about, but if we were going to go down this route that, that Brenton is asking about, we will write with a Sharpie, even if I didn't use a Sharpie to, to, to break up my, to organize my, um, my counting, we do write 
counted, the date we counted it, the date and the person's initials. So we do know that this trap was indeed processed. Um, and uh, so if we are going to do that, it would be great for you guys to just note that. So if we were to archive them, we would know that these, there's, there's, this data should exist somewhere in some data sheet. Yeah, I think it would be great to archive them, especially for those that are in the kind of LA Ventura counties. Would be cool to keep track of them. So if you guys can keep them, that'd be great. And I, I do think next week, I was kind of going to keep next week open. We're going to meet, but just go over last quest, last minute questions for analysis for the report and stuff like that. So that would be a good time that we can kind of just everyone can show some of their sticky traps and see you know, talk about some of the cool things that they've collected. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. Um, other than that, anybody else have questions for Dr. Ayer or myself before we let you go and kind of do these, these last kind of surveys and analysis? I'm all good. I have a question. Um, so I know that the Department of Health has Arthropods that we find uh, in the pitfalls, do you want us to save those too? Historically, we do, but um, maybe maybe you guys could save them just for this week and we can have a discussion, like a really quick discussion next uh, next Friday. So maybe you guys could, could keep them. And if you are, again, if you are going to keep them, ideal in a little bit of alcohol once you've, once you've processed them. Um, and so, uh, it, you could even just keep them in your same plastic cup or little jar. And if you didn't have a nice lid, you could even just put a, a sort of saran wrap lid over them. Um, and maybe just set them aside for the next week and we can have that. We'll decide next week. Yeah. I think if we do this going forward, we'll, you know, especially when campus is open, we can give you some small little vials yeah. with alcohol so we can maybe preserve these. If you do get anything really cool, kind of out of the ordinary, keep it you can throw it in some alcohol or something like that um a lot of times i just you know if i run out of actual ethanol the 180 90 proof i just preserve i have so many gobies that are in vodka i can't even tell you or tequila <laughs> Muscat. yeah it smells it smells a lot better too so that'll help at least until maybe campus opens and we can put it in a cool vial if you if you get anything unique yeah, I have to say there there was a discussion with amongst people I know. Of, I don't know what it was about a year ago. Uh, this this uh, colleague was was somewhere in Africa doing sampling, and there was a very very serious discussion on what, which al they, she couldn't get uh, you know lab grade ethanol or whatever. So there's a very serious discussion on which brand of alcohol she should be bringing with her. Uh the cheap, uh, the cheapest. I, 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 it, it was a very impassioned discussion amongst the. Uh, oh, yeah, I people. just get like the big. Uh, I usually always take a big fifth or handle of that pop off vodka, like this <laughs> crappy pop off, because it's super potent. But then if you actually do need like emergency booze make a cocktail in the field why would anybody ever need that right now i have no idea why that would be an assist yeah, to people at this time true. yeah in our country um cool cool well yeah i mean awesome guys keep posting if you if you're into that i think it's really awesome to see what everybody's doing take good photos um i'm really big on taking photos uh, of these kinds of stuff because once you pull it and you know you start analyzing it, it it's uh you know it's easy to kind of get in that mode and be like, oh, crap, I forgot to take photos of, of the whole process. Um, and, yeah, like Dr. A said, hey, you what? know, take notes of and photos of any cool, you know, a lot of the species that might be really abundant or common, even, like, rare ones. So if you get, like, a cool rare butterfly or something in one of your sticky traps, you know, take some good photos of that. Um, and then we'll meet next week. Next week's going to be kind of just, like, a final go-through with all this help anybody with analysis and then, you know, just have a general discussion on what everybody's collecting. Yeah. And just a quick, a quick note, when you guys take images, like representative images, especially uh, if you want to send them to Brenton or to me or, or to ask questions next week or whatever, um, yeah, yeah. Tr try to put a scale bar in it, try to put a ruler in yeah. because, um, you know, particularly when we're these small things, it's a little bit hard. Is, is that, and if there isn't any kind of re visual reference, it's like, Ugh. Was, was that a this or a that? So if you can put, even if it's just a little ruler um, in the field of view so that we could see, that would be um, always helpful.
Yeah, and make sure to check out the, the manual that I, I posted that Dr. Egg shared that has a lot of invert IDs. iNaturalist is pretty good with, with insect IDs too, especially common ones um, that are found in, in um, urban areas. Um, and so if you, if, you go, if you go through that uh, ID key and iNaturalist and you still can't figure anything out, send us a, a photo and we can try to help you out with it. I'll also, I'll also end by saying that I'm in the lab legally, so, legally, because today we're getting our FTIR, our, mi our microplastic sensing cool. microscope. So, um, awesome. so it won't be, it won't be running after today, but we're, we're here to physically take, uh, Emily and I are, are here to physically take receipt. Um, so, uh, that's, that's a little bit of happy news in this crazy time. Uh, finally it's showing up. So everybody have a great week.